Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. So what I'm going to be showing you today is how you can track the download progress of a request made using JavaScript's native fetch function. So I'll show you how to do that first and after that show you how you can use this information to update a progress bar and also a percentage complete text in the DOM. So in JavaScript the first thing I'm going to do is to make a fetch request and I'm going to be making it to a URL that is specifically designed to test fetch and streams indicated progress. So if you click view on GitHub here, I'll post a link to this page in the description for this video. And you go down here, clever thing about these URLs is that the download progress is limited to this part of the URL. So I'm going to be selecting an image that is going to download at 30 kilobytes per second. So I'm going to be fetching this image. Now this request is going to return a response object which is accessible via the then method and I have it available to me here. So if I refresh the page here and open the console the that we have the response object that has a body on it and that body is a readable stream so the way that we're going to be monitoring download progress is by reading the progress of this stream now what we're going to need to be able to do that is for there to be a content length header on the headers property here so it's not directly available in the response object you have to access the headers via some sort of iterable method. So what you can do is spread the values of res.headers into a console log, and that will give you the values here. You can see there is indeed a content length on it, and it's telling me that it's just over 100,000 bytes. Now, if this doesn't exist on the response object, then you're not going to be able to track download progress. Thankfully, if you're using Express in Node.js on the back end, then this is automatically added when you call res.send. If it's a third party API over which you have no control, then you're going to want to get in touch with the admin. So assuming that you have the content length header, what you're going to want to do is to get that value so that you know how many bytes you are going to be downloading. So you can get that by calling the get method here on headers and then entering the value of the header it is that you want to get the value of. So in this case, content length. And I'll also initialize a new variable here that is going to track the progress of the download. So it's going to start at a value of zero. Now that I have these two bits of information, what I'm going to do is two things simultaneously. The first one is I'm going to read the stream on the response object that we just saw and monitor the progress of that. And with the result of that, I'm going to create a new response object with a new readable stream on it. So for the fetched readable stream on the original response object, I'm not going to be doing any processing. What I'm going to be doing is passing down the resulting new response object to another then method where I will be processing the result. So because I'm passing down a response object, you can process it like you would from a fetch request using methods like res.json, or in this case, because it's an image, we'll be using the blob method to read the stream on the new response object that we'll be creating now. So to create a new response object, you can call upon the response constructor and what I want to do is actually make this response object the return statement of this function so that it's then passed down to the next then method. And to include a readable stream on the response object, you can call the readable stream constructor inside of the response. So readable stream it accepts as a first argument an object, and it's expected here that you will define a property called start. So this is recognized by a readable stream 
and what you have available to you here as a parameter is controller and what this readable stream is going to contain is the data that we're downloading in the fetch request while we also simultaneously monitor the download so we're going to be reading the body of the response object which is a readable stream so access the body and create a reader on that stream you call get reader that's going to return a reader to us and this has available a read method on it that allows us to read the stream now because the read method reads the stream bit by bit what i'm going to do is to create a read function here that i'm going to repeatedly call until the reading of the stream is complete so i'm going to initially call function so inside of the function i'm going to be reading the stream using the reader that i just created so i'll call read on reader so this is promise based so i can access the result using a then method and passing in the function where the result is available to me so this is a progress event i'm calling it you can call it whatever you want and this has available on it the amount of progress on the download so far in bytes so the way it works is this function is going to be called repeatedly again and again until the download is fully complete when this occurs a done property on the progress event will be set to true so the first thing i'm going to do here is to check if progress event dot done is equal to true and if that is the case then i'm going to call the close method on the controller that we have available here to stop the reading of the stream and then i'm going to call return so that i exit out of this nested function so this is only going to run when it's complete until then i'm going to want to get download progress and also pass the data that i'm reading into the new readable stream that we are creating here so if you remember we created loaded above here and we set the initial value to zero so what we want to do is to increase the value of loaded by progress event dot value dot byte length so this is the number of bytes read in the current read now with this information and the total content length which we got earlier we can actually estimate already the percentage of the download already complete so i'll log that to the console i'll round the result and to get the percentage complete, we divide the amount of bytes already loaded by the total number of bytes. So that's going to give a statistic between 0 and 1. Then you want to multiply that by 100 to get it as a percentage. And then I'll just add on the end here a percentage symbol. Now to pass the data into the readable stream that we are creating, we again a method on the controller called on queue and we pass into there progress event dot value now we can be sure that if this code down here has run then the download is not yet complete because we haven't exited out of the function so the final thing to do because there is more to read is to call this function again the read function which is again going to read from the original readable stream, the then method with the progress event, it's then going to fire, and we're going to get another update. And this is going to continue until the code inside this if statement runs, at which point the download is complete, and the readable stream that we've been constructing this whole time is now ready to read inside the next then method. Now, before we do that, let's just check that what we have so far is working via the console log so you can see that we're getting updates on the status of the download sometimes we're getting twice the same value because probably it was such a small amount to be read that it logs the same percentage twice so we go until the stream is completely read so now for the processing so this depends on what type of file you are downloading so you might call 
res.txt if you want the result to be read to text, or if it's a JSON file and you want it to be read to a JavaScript object, you'd call the JSON method. Uh, if it's a file-like download like we have here, then you're likely going to want to call the blob method. So the result of reading to blob is going to be available in the next then method. So we have available here the blob. And what you can do with that is create a URL to the data it contains, asking blob to the create object URL method on URL. So that exists on the global window. So I'll store a reference to that. Now I'll create a new image in JavaScript. And I'm going to set the URL of this image to that URL that I just created. And then I'm going to append to the body of the document that image element that I just created. So let's check if this is all working. And if it is, we can then move on to the progress bar. So you see now that we're getting the download progress in the console, the image is loading. So now let's talk about how we can update the progress bar with a text percentage below it. So for this, I'm using a pure CSS progress bar because it's consistent in its appearance across browsers. So the way that a pure CSS progress bar works, you have a fill that starts with a width of zero, and that width is relative to its container, which in this case, progress bar. And as the download progresses, you want to update the style of this span here. So the fill, so that it expands to fill its parent element. So this div. So if you look at the CSS, so go down and find the fill. You see the width is set to 0% initially, but its parent is width 100% of its parent, which is 600 pixels. So fill is going to expand into progress bar that is going to be 600 pixels in width. And it has a color of green here. So this is the color of your progress fill as it completes. So first of all, I'm going to select the relevant elements. So I'm going to want to select fill and also progress text. So I can insert the progress as a percentage. So I'll use the query selector here, selecting the element, first of all, the fill. So I'll call that fill and then I'll select the progress text element. Again, I'll use the query selector here. So now that I've selected these two, I'm going to be manipulating them using the progress event object. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is instead of logging this progress complete percentage to the console, I'm going to store that in a variable. So I'll call this prog. And I'm going to set the progress text, text content property to the value of prog. So that's nice and easy. And for the fill, set the width of that also to prog. So I can do that because CSS is accepting a percentage as a string. So I can delete that console log now. So Let's take a look and see if this is working now. So we're getting the percentage update, the progress bar is completing, and we have the image. So that's all I've got for you in this tutorial. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. It helps us with the algorithm and others to find this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this from us in the future, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel.